the kind of person he was was like any other person. He was a, he was interested in uh, in us, and I'm, when I say us, people who look like me and the people who look like him, and and the better our condition in the state of Mississippi, right? Uh, and around around the world, that he was he that was the type of person. He was just concerned about. Uh, the, the welfare of black, the black welfare yeah. was. right? That's that's the kind of person he was. He right. he didn't talk. He wasn't a loud person. He didn't talk a lot, but he did things, and he was a uh, you know uh, a third person, and the things he did and talked about. But he wasn't a a, 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 a loud, expressive person. Uh, he was a behind the scenes person. type right. guy. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I got with T. R. M. Howard uh, as the, uh, uh, I guess, an agent. Is an officer for, for for the agent. In other words, I I kept uh, the the report of the agents who were out in the field. So I did not serve in the field, but I served in the office to look out and take care of the agents who were in the field and they were reported to me, um, you know, what they were doing and if they had problems, I would go and check with them. That was, that was the that was your office job. That, that I, uh, the position I had with Magnolia Mutual Life Insurance Company. Right. And as a, as a um, uh, member of the insurance company and, and uh, from time to time being involved with Dr. Howard, uh, he kind of got the feeling that he would like for me to be involved in some other things. So I also had the opportunity to be involved with him in a lot of the board meetings that he had at Magnolia Mutual Life Insurance Company with the uh, uh, board meeting for the uh, United Order of Friendship, which was the, uh, the insurance company. And okay. his... Uh, Later on, his um, um, medical facility that he that he started across the street from the uh, hospital. Uh, he had a private doctor's office across there, and also uh, his, uh, his, his 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 board meeting with uh, several other organizations that he was in that he was in, in, in involved with. Right. Uh, so uh, and. Uh, he was also involved, and in, he started an organization that is called the uh, uh, I'm blocking on the name of it right now. It's the uh, uh, I, I, I'll give you the name of it in a few minutes, but okay. But uh, well, he started that though. In other words, the organization that they had the, uh, the tags on and started saying is if you can't. Don't buy gas at a service station in the state where you can't use the restroom. Really? Yeah, and and they had tags on the cars for you know uh, ab uh, advertising that. And uh, uh, but I was involved with him in in in, in, a, in a lot of those things, and and later on, like the Mississippi uh, yeah. Freedom Democratic Party. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And he was the one that began to get involved, and especially after the murder of Emmett Till, he was a person that, that was, I would say, was solely responsible for making it a, a, a national situation because it was supposed to have been, it appeared to have been a hush-hush thing just for Mississippi. Nobody, the state, I mean, the, the rest of the United States supposed never, to leave outside the state. never spoke to get outside the United States. And Dr. Howard was responsible for exposing that situation to the, to the uh, United yeah. States. And really? in, 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 in that, he uh, made speeches uh, around, and he would go throughout the state and, and throughout the uh, local, I mean, the, the states around, Alabama and Georgia and Tennessee and all around in the right. southern states talking about the Emmett Till situation 
to make sure that it was exposed and everybody knew about it. Right. And and according to some other recordings in history, he made a speech and uh, at uh, Dr. Martin Luther King parent church when uh, who were big I think a lot of people don't realize how big Dr. King's mother and his father were before he even became you know big as far as like in the church in the church area oh yeah yeah and his, his mother dying she ended up getting shot and all that stuff I don't think a lot of people know that history about Dr. King right yeah yeah well <clears throat> his history is written uh, in a book called The Black Maverick and it tells a whole lot about basically some of the things that I've just, just mentioned briefly right. about uh, uh, about him speaking at the Martin Luther King Church and the fact that uh, when he spoke, uh, Rosa Parks was in the audience and, uh, and that was like on a Friday and that Monday morning when she got ready to go to work, she had heard so much and she just felt that she just uh, just, just was tired and she didn't I understand she did not get up because of so many things that going on and she was just tired right. of what the, what the uh, southern uh, white folk were doing to black people in the south. Let me ask you a question. Um, you said that uh, that Rosa Parks listened to T.R.M. Howard and that's what was one of her inspirations to, to, oh, to yes. sit on? Oh, yes, that was, that was the, the, the thing that she said that was inspired her. Was T.R.M. Howard. Because he was talking about, you know, the, that how they had done this boy from, from Chicago. Uh, they came and, and killed him and did what they did to him for supposedly whistling at a white woman. Right. Yeah, so... Uh, and, it's, you know, and that was a big thing. Like, how? What was the racial tensions like? Was it real thick? Because um, I hear uh, stories like from the Deacons of Defense, all these other different like um, organization, militia groups. Um, and then you had the Ku Klux Klan. Was it very violent at that time? Or was it a lot of violence going on between the two groups, between the blacks and the whites? <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, I guess it depends on how you look at it, how much violent it was. There was not a whole lot of um, killing, like you know, like uh, you might say, going out in the streets shooting a whole lot of folk. Right. But the tension, the tension was real, real high all that time, and okay. uh, and uh, like it was, it, it was pretty much the tension was was high. And, and 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 how you know white people were treating uh, black people just ordinarily throughout the state for all those years and even through then and uh, during that time uh, Dr. Howard gotten ready to uh, go to meetings and spread the word from place to place and time to time uh, he would have different people driving him to different uh, meetings, I mean, to miss meetings, and and uh, different cars that he rode in, and and there were many times that I was his driver. You were driving, Mr. Howard. I was Howard. driving Dr. Howard to go to a, a meeting or to a, to do a speech. Okay. And uh, he was in the back back seat. He always rode in the back seat. And different cars and. Uh, Black, the back window was always covered to keep people from knowing who was in the, the back. back. Yeah.